here's Stephen A's list from last week. You know it's fluid. He always gives that disclaimer. It was Chiefs number one, Packers two, Seahawks three, Bills four, Patriots five. But how about this week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know what time it is. Steven's A-list. Let's get right to it. I don't have time to waste. I'm in L.A., y'all. Sunshine's waiting for me. Let's get this out of the way, this A-list right now. Let's go to number <laughs> five on the list. Give it to me, please. The Baltimore Ravens. Why? Because against that team in Washington who still doesn't have a name, they still handle their business fresh off of what transpired a week before Monday Night Football when Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens couldn't show up against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. But he made amends a little bit. They won 31-17. They still got a top three rushing attack. Lamar Jackson's their leading rusher. Oh, by the way, he's only thrown one interception just and seven touchdowns on the season, completing nearly 70% of his passes. I'm going to give the Baltimore Ravens some love and leave them in that top five list. Let's go to number four, please. Give it to me. No change here. The Buffalo Bills. Why? Because I don't know if anybody's been paying attention, but we're talking about Aaron Rodgers. We're talking about Russell Wilson. I'm I'm sorry when you're talking about league MVP. We just gonna ignore what Josh Allen is doing. <clears throat> 12 touchdowns on the season, season, just one interception, has completed 70% of his passes, and the Buffalo Bills are undefeated. Oh, by the way, their secondary isn't even shaped up yet. They got some brothers up in there that can play. Imagine when everybody gets healthy and they're ready to go. The Buffalo Bills cannot be ignored. They might be the number one threat to the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC before all is said and done. But let's see what happens with New England when Cam goes back. Let's go to number three on the list. Give it to me, y'all. Packers, why? Max Kellerman explained it earlier. I explained it earlier. Aaron Rodgers is that dude. I'm going to say it for y'all. He's a bad man. This brother's <laughs> something special. 13 touchdowns out of single interception, completing 70% of his passes with Lazard, with Valdez, Scantlin, and the rest of the crew. Don't even have Devontae Adams available to him all the time. The bottom line is this man is still doing his thing. Aaron Rodgers is special, putting the world on notice. The hell you go and draft my successor. For. Don't you know who the hell I am? You must have forgot, Green Bay. Let me remind all of y'all in the world who the hell I am. That's what he did. That's what he's doing. Keep your eyes on Green Bay. They're the number three team on my list. Let's go to number two on the list. I'm going to give it to you. The Seattle Seahawks. Why? Because of Russell Wilson. That's why DK Metcalf can ball. Tyler Lockett can ball. Greg Olson being there. There's just safety net at the tight end spot. That's an upgrade. We all know they can run the football as well. But in the end, it comes down to Russell Wilson. 16 touchdowns, just two interceptions, completing about 75% of his passes. They're also undefeated, and that's with their defense being a little bit suspect. I mean, wait till they get it together. We got to give props where props is due. We saw what they did against New England when Russell Wilson threw for five touchdowns, by the way. Five touchdown passes. But anyway, that's a story for another day. They're number two on the list. We all know who's number one on the list. It's just unavoidable. Somehow, some way, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are going to find a way to win. They were, self, they were suspect last night offensively. Bill Belichick and that New England Patriots, I mean, they've got their number. They kind of handcuffed them just a touch. But somehow, some way, they find a way. And their defense is vastly improved from last year. Got to give love to the Kansas City Chiefs, not just because of Mahomes, not just because of um, Andy Reid, but because of that defense. And, oh, by the way, Houston, since you fired your coach, how about talking to Eric Bieniemy? He could be a head coach in the NFL someday. I mean, he's only been doing his thing, and he's only the reigning Super Bowl champion as an offensive coordinator. It's just a thought. There's a lot to applaud about the Kansas City Chiefs. That's why they deserve to be number one on my list. Chiefs, Seahawks, Packers, Bills, Ravens. That's the list. Stephen mm. A. Stevens A list just for this week. Floor is y'all's. Max, you're up first. <laughs> Well, first of all, it's a good list. Uh, I, have some, I have some minor quibbles. Number one, I don't know how the Ravens get back on with a win against or maybe what, who, like a team that turns out to be the worst team maybe in the worst division ever. I don't know why that puts the Ravens back on the list if they were off the list. Steelers and Titans can't help that their game was postponed, really, uh, whether that's postponed or canceled or whatever. You can make an argument there. I would say the Patriots, I know they're 2-2. Two and two. Without Cam Newton, they played a hell of a defensive game against the Chiefs. 
With Cam Newton, maybe it's different. You brought that up earlier, Stephen A. And otherwise, their one loss is to Seattle on a great goal line sta stand by the Seahawks. I think you'd actually make a loss, a, a case for a 2-2 well, two and two team right now. And the other minor quibble is this. I know Seattle is, you know, everyone's talking about Russell Wilson for MVP, and they're looking really good. I think the Packers' defense has looked a little better than the Seattle defense. And truth be told, I like Aaron Rodgers over Russell Wilson right now by a hair. I'd put the Packers ahead of the Seahawks. They have two divisional wins. And by the way, the Vikings lost by, what, a point to the Titans, right? I mean, and, and that's one of the divisional wins. And then they've also beaten the Saints. I would put Seattle second to the Chiefs. Two things real quick uh, sorry, before sorry, you take Packers over, Jeff. Second to the Chiefs. Two, two, th two things real quick, Jeff, before you take over. Number one, no 500 team. I don't give a damn how good you are. You're two and two. You ain't getting on my list. That's number one. We're not doing that. And number two, <laughs> when you talk about you can quibble, you take Aaron Rodgers over Russell Wilson by a hair. Max Kellerman, I got you. I got news for you. When you're my age with this hairline, any hair is coming in my direction. I'm not giving that hair no to anybody. Hair. <laughs> Floor is yours, Jeff Saturday. <laughs> I, I, I like the list. I, I, I do. I like it as well. I will say there's a couple things I got an issue with. I, I, and, and to your point, a two and two, I don't care. Uh, it, look, the Patriots played good. There are no moral victories, right, La last night. Their quarterbacks didn't play well. They had some bad calls. Either way, you got to win games like that. I do have a big problem, though. We got the Packers and the Seahawks up on the list. What about the Buccaneers, who, by the way, of all three of those teams, have by far the best defense, and they have Todd Bowles as the defensive coordinator, Preach, who should give you concern as that season moves on. And, by the way, Brady is balling two – I mean, two touchdowns were drops. I think it was in week two. But it's like all of a sudden we're not even talking about the, the, the Bucks because – Aaron Rodgers goes out and lights up the Falcons, who basically have me playing DB last night. I mean, there were dudes who were ten yards open. That did, you didn't have to be you didn't have to be accurate to win that game last night. All you had to do is don't trip yourself. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.